Welcome to On The Chain. This is Jeff here with co-host Ship. What's going on, Ship? Tonight, we have a very, very special guest with us. We have none other than Congressman Tom Emmer. Uh, Tom, great to have you here with us. We've been looking forward to this for quite a while. Well, thank you. So am I, Jeff. But uh, somebody should have given me the memo. I could get rid of the tie earlier today, but that's fine. I'll right. play the part. I'll play the part tonight. Okay. That's that's awesome. All right. So so tonight, you know, we want to get into and, and you've been very, very instrumental in legislation, regulatory clarity for the crypto space. Obviously, we know we're up against uh, there's a lot of things that are going on contrary to the outcome that we would like. There's some players in the space uh, like Gary Gensler, amongst uh, many others. And we're going to get mm -hmm. into a lot of all, all of that uh, here. Chip, if you're ready to kick this thing off. You Let's, go, start guys. It? Let's go, guys. Let's go. Welcome to On The Chain. And this is On The Chain Live. So everybody, if you have questions, go ahead and submit questions too. Now we have a limited time, you know, obviously uh, Congressman Emmer is incredibly busy and it's great that you took a little bit of time to do this. And, you know, one of the things we brought up was, uh, was Gary Gensler. And one of the things that was amazing in the last hearing, you actually got him to admit that the protection only went to people who, in other words, you said if they bought if they bought a security, or if that was it was security related, he kind of admitted that well, if it wasn't uh, under the guise of a digital asset, but it was a security, they did not have protection of the SEC. What were your what was your uh, thought on that revelation? Well, it's interesting, uh, Chip. The uh, Gary Gensler is like so many of these uh, uh, appointees that have come through, not just in the current administration. I mean, let's be realistic. It was the last administration as well. Uh, they don't understand this space, and uh, they're trying to they're trying to learn on the job. And while they're learning on the job, last time we had people, in my opinion, uh, Brian Brooks was the greatest partner that we had in terms of trying to work through the OCC and. He, he had a uh, more than a good understanding. But after you got past Brian, I mean, it didn't matter if it was in the, the office of the Treasury. It uh, didn't matter if it was in the SEC. Really smart people that uh, seem to be resistant, you know, trying to slow down the progress because they didn't understand. This time, this time I, I was looking forward to the new administration to kind of do the Etch-a-Sketch thing and you know, start all over and building the relationship and hopefully having them lean in and, and take away some of those obstacles to uh, progress. But instead, we're not necessarily getting obstacles the way I felt we were getting them last time, where someone's literally saying, yeah, we're not going to do that right now. You know, we need to study that a little bit more. We got a lot of people here who are working on it. And then you had bright lights like Brian Brooks, Hester Pierce, uh, Giancarlo, they were out there, you know, trying to develop their own brand about what this uh, means to entrepreneurship, opportunity, et cetera, in this country. Now we've got this, Chip. We've got uh, Gary Gensler has come in, and I would argue that he doesn't understand. He's got to get into the 21st century. I mean, keep in mind, this is a guy who stood in front of a camera not too long ago and said, my recommendation to all of you right now is start saving. This is a message from 1942. Start <laughs> saving. Start putting your money away. You know, interest compounding. It, it, I mean, it was incredible. And he, this is a guy who sat in that hearing and suggested from his standpoint, almost everything qualifies as a security. When, you know, from my perspective, no, most things are currency or commodity and they become a security or they start out as a security and then evolve into something else. He just doesn't get it. And, and it wasn't just that admission, which is good. Getting back to your question, it's good because it suggests that he already understands he's going to need action by Congress to expand his uh, his desire uh, to have an expanded jurisdiction here. That being said, uh, he's creating, I think, all kinds of confusion in the marketplace. It's regulation through public statement. And by the way, confusing public statements, which uh, is not healthy for us going forward. Yeah. And you, and you really you know, hit on a, a good point here, because here's a guy that claims, you know, because of the fact that he taught at MIT and he, and he reminds people every chance he gets, he gets up in front of a camera and he immediately. Well, if you remember, I taught at MIT and it all 
referencing back to blockchain. But to your point, he seems to be lacking, you know, the 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 needed knowledge to really push forward with the clarity that that we really need in this space. Or maybe there's an ulterior motive that we haven't uncovered yet. Um, but you know. How do you feel? I mean, you, you look at this space, you're very pro crypto. You have an individual like Gary Gensler who keeps dancing around questions and doesn't seem to be protecting the retail investor at all. But then you have people like Maxine Waters, or, you know, chair of the, uh, the Financial Services Committee. And we've had multiple bills uh, in front of the Financial Services Committee, like the Token Taxonomy Act. And you've put a number of bills in front of Congress, um, but they don't seem to get the right traction. Is there a missing element uh, that, that we need to really focus in on? Well, it's interesting. First, you said we don't. Maybe there's another motive. I don't know that there is another motive uh, other than if there is, it's your federal government uh, wants to uh, we, they want to be the intermediary. Right. They, they need to be the intermediary. And I, I know this is going to sound a little radical, but you got to pay the VIG. All right. This is like. Uh, you know, when you work with uh, the mob, it used to be the mob would control the street. And in order for you to uh, buy your safety, you had to pay the VIG. And uh, in this case, you know, our government has been controlling the currency. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of reasons why. A lot of my colleagues would say that we need to have this control because of the ability to uh, enforce sanctions around uh, the world. I'm going to tell you, uh, I don't agree. I think uh, in this case, you and I having the ability to uh, do a transaction one-on-one -on -one without having a third party uh, intermediated, uh, I think that is the future. And uh, people are going to do this. Here, here's the reality, whether it's Maxine Waters, Gary Gensler, uh, and, and gosh, you know, I went to the MIT, uh, by the way, Jeff, the MIT of the Northwest. I'm a graduate of the University of Alaska. I don't know if I've told anybody that. I lived in a cabin in the woods with no running water and uh, I think uh, when you bring that up, again, no offense to uh, to the uh, chair of the SEC, but I, I'm I'm going to suggest to you there's a not only an ignorance, there's an arrogance, and uh, they don't seem to understand. There's a whole class of Americans. There's a whole class of people on the street around the world. Uh, they may not have a fancy degree from some big, uh, uh, you know, well-known university, uh, but you know what? They're light years ahead of these people in terms of their knowledge of uh, the internet, their knowledge of the products they're working with, what they're trying to do. They're creating value every day with or without the government. The problem with this attitude, uh, and like you say, there's lots of proposals uh, in front of the House Financial Services Committee. I think the Senate is uh, slowly catching up. You got some people over there like Cynthia Lummis and others that were leading the way, but now there are others since they decided Oh, Lordy, look, this might be a revenue source. Oh, right. well, now we're going to have to learn about it because, uh, God forbid, government be left at the end of the line when it comes to collecting their share of the revenue. So it, it's picking up. But Maxine Waters, God bless her, uh, her focus is different from yours and mine. Uh, we've had 33 hearings on housing. OK, mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, this is going to have to change because we're losing opportunities every day and we stand to lose uh, even bigger opportunities if we let this regulation by public statement continue. We got to uh, we got to start having some clear playing uh, rules of the road. Uh, the uh, the uh, taxonomy bill that my colleague uh, Warren Davidson has had out there. You know, I've got the Securities Clarity Act, which I think is actually a better resolution. But I don't know what the answer is. I think Warren's one of these guys who's leaned in and he's been very creative. Uh, I think we're doing the same thing. Patrick McHenry has been doing things. I think we've got to bring all that together. If government's going to have anything to do with this, right? Because I got news for my colleagues. This is going to happen with us or without us. So let's make a decision soon on how we help the, the industry grow and how we keep these opportunities here in the United States. Well said. And, you know, so there is a committee, uh, there's a hearing coming up called the Digital Assets and the Future of Financing, uh, Understanding the Challenges and Benefits. That's coming up just in a couple of weeks here. Are you kind of optimistic? I mean, really, it's the first sort of, because I, I got to be honest, we haven't really had anything around that. Even the title of it is, I was somewhat 
encouraged by it when I saw John Deaton tweet about it earlier today. But are you somewhat in uh, what's going on behind the scenes with that? What's what do you think is going to take place at that hearing? Are you optimistic about it? Well, you know, we uh, we all uh, there's 10 of us, uh, four Democrats so far, six Republicans. Uh, we all jumped on a bill that was led by uh, ranking member McHenry and Tim from uh, North Carolina and Tim Ryan from uh, Ohio to try and undo this unfortunate tax mm -hmm. that they have created on the uh, on the Senate side that became law with the passage of the bipartisan infrastructure bill. That might be part of it, Chip. Right. That uh, now that is law. Hmm. There's a bunch of us that are moving to uh, ref to change that reforms, the wrong word, change that or eliminate that. Right. Because uh, it creates a whole host of problems. I mean, you've got uh, non-custodial uh, players out there that are going to be asked to collect uh, know your customer information, which they don't have any customers. <laughs> uh, it's just physically impossible for them to do this under the current law. The good news is because of uh, what I consider a uh, misguided approach on the Senate side that made it into the final bill, which Nancy Pelosi would not let any of her, her uh, Democrat colleagues, nor any of us on the Republican side amend it before it became law. Well, this has raised the discussion. And I, you know, for better or worse, I can smile when you bring it up and say, you know, <laughs> this kind of made me feel better that you're, you're doing something. You're right. You're right. I, I can smile and say, yeah, I'm, I, I'm still suspicious. I'm cynical. But the fact that we have a hearing that we're actually going to talk about this sort of thing, I will get to uh, say my perspective. Others, you know, it, whether it's Barry Loudermilk or it's Patrick McHenry or it's, you know, that we're going to have these perspectives from both the Republican side. And then you're going to see the Democrats doing it, which think about this, Chip. Uh, five years ago, six years ago, when I, we first started talking about this, I had a Republican chairman. I actually gave him the first book I read on this topic, The Age of Cryptocurrency, because, you know, Jeb Henserling hadn't really gotten into this area. Uh, forget for a second, Jeb has yet to give me my book back, which I'm still, still chasing him down for. But I listened in one of the first hearings in the Financial Services Committee way back then I listen to Republican and Democrats literally sound the same, right? They're, they mm -hmm. they they equated cryptocurrencies with Silk Road. They uh, they equated it with every bad thing in the world. Now you're down to basically Brad Sherman from California. Every time <laughs> some uh, uh, crypto issue comes up, he just goes off like you know the canary in the coal mine. Oh, this is the most this is awful people, terrible thing, uh, and yet. I've got a bunch of traditional bankers on both sides of the aisle. They're coming around slowly. Are, are they true believers? No, no, not yet. Uh, do they uh, look at uh, central bank digital currency as, yeah, this might be the way to go. I mean, some of us are still sitting out here saying, you know, that's the last thing I want to do is emulate the Communist Party of China. I want the private sector to be doing this stuff. That's where the best ideas come from. That's where the competition comes from. I don't need uh, the post office running my uh, my currency or or my uh, you know chosen a uh, uh, preferred method of exchange. So uh, I, I have uh, high hopes. I think the fact that you see that getting noticed, you should you should have a positive view towards that, regardless of whether the hearing turns out to be productive or not. I mean, it's much better than what we've been seeing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, so you have uh, two uh, newer uh, pieces of legislation that that you know, you had mentioned. One of them, the Securities Clarity Act, uh, that was introduced back in uh, July, and then you also have the Blockchain Regulatory Certainty Act. I like how you know there there seems to be you know kind of like a a, a divide and conquer uh, mentality. You know, as you break up all these different bills and introduce them. Because it's not just one bill is going to fix everything. You know, there, there's a lot of elements that have to go into regulatory clarity. And I, I like how you also reference this idea, this notion of the central bank digital currency that starts out with central. And Chip always reminds everybody of that. It Central means centralized, you know, no private. Um, but, what, you know, as we're, as we're looking at all these elements, which are, are great net positives, uh, the current administration keeps adding elements to... Uh, the administration. Uh, it, it, we just saw over the past week or so uh, the nominee uh, Amarova, you know, for the OCC. 
uh, which was shocking. You know, her her ideas of of private banking versus you know public banking, and then also you know, this idea that Bitcoin was a national security uh, issue. Yeah. Well, and, and let's face it, the uh, the media is trying to catch up too, right? Uh, so. Amarova, uh, even the reporting I saw on that was not, uh, it wasn't detailed or deep enough at all. And I, I getting back to how you opened, uh, you said, you know, I like what you're introducing. It's kind of a divide and conquer. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we're going to say the same thing, but it's educate, divide, conquer, and educate because some of these things are not going to happen right away, but you got to start raising awareness. You got to start bringing members. Unfortunately, many who, uh, you know, come from my generation, you know, my generation is not uh, like the current generation. We uh, we used to read newspapers, right? And we'd feel the newspaper between our fingertips. We used to push buttons for the radio in our car and we would get whatever was on the station. You know, this generation, uh, they consume their information so differently. They communicate so differently. More importantly, they think and process a lot differently, where my generation would be in uh, two dimension, uh, and we'd call it abstract if we tried to go beyond that. Uh, you know, this generation is thinking in uh, three dimension and beyond, and that's really how they can be uh, such visionary. So what we're trying to do with things like the Blockchain Regulatory Certainty Act that you brought up, we introduced that back in August. Uh, we have a uh, Democrat, Darren Soto from Florida, who's the, uh, mm -hmm. who, who's the co-author uh, just take little bites, right? This one would say that non-custodial entities are not money transmitters. Why is that important? Well, because right now you uh, you have to require, if you're a miner or a uh, software developer, you got to register as money transmitters in 53 jurisdictions just to do business in the United mm -hmm. States. Uh, it's it's it, In my opinion, it's the single most harmful regulatory framework that we have. This is really, when you talk about interstate commerce, this is what the federal government should be weighing into. Uh, this bill would affirm that blockchain developers and service providers that never custody consumer funds don't have to register as money transmitters. Common sense stuff, right? Uh, the Securities Clarity Act is, uh, you know, it goes back to what I was talking about earlier, that uh, uh, regulatory ignorance is pushing innovation out of this country, sending it overseas. The Securities Clarity Act would distinguish uh, digital assets from the securities contract. They may or may not have been part of at one point. Uh, it does this by amending securities law, existing securities law, to include a new definition, a quote, investment contract asset. You know, tokens, for instance, are investment contract assets. Uh, why? Well, because the SEC, as we have talked about, is regulating by enforcement, uh, by, by verbal statements and enforcement mm. actions, as opposed to uh, actually having rules that people understand. I would hope that if we could move this forward, uh, entrepreneurs would have the securities clarity they need to innovate here in this country, which, uh, again, will raise, uh, will uh, create new opportunities for everyone. And that, we talked about uh, Warren's uh, token taxonomy bill, which... I think the greatest thing about this is that we need more members of Congress come to the table with potential and thoughtful legislative solutions. Uh, this bill, uh, the token taxonomy bill, as you guys know, because I think you've actually talked with Warren about it, mm -hmm. it would specify yeah. that digital tokens are not securities for regulatory purposes, which would uh, probably help uh, Chair Gensler immensely. <laughs> I, That's right. The the, uh, the challenge, I think, and I've talked to Warren about this, is the bill is very broad. It's a uh, de minimis tax provision plus a securities provision, uh, mm -hmm. which is why I prefer the uh, Securities Clarity uh, Act approach. But look, at the end of the day, none of us knows for sure what the right fix is uh, right now, but we're all trying to figure that out. And it goes back to what you were talking about uh, a second ago, Chip, that uh just having them start to notice hearings so that we can have some substantive, really uh, uh, deep conversations about what this is and how government will it can create a situation where we don't put a wet blanket on this innovation, where we don't uh, put obstacles in the way. We can put light touch regulatory framework around it 
basically, uh, if we do this right, we should be putting up some uh, some curbs right along the side of the road. That can you spill over the top of the curb? Sure, but do they give you uh, some idea of where the edge is? Yes, that's what we should be doing instead of uh, creating a lock and dam system where you got to sit and wait while they fill the darn thing up and open the gates so you can get out to the next stage. Right on. And by the way, Jeff keeps a 1950s phone on his desk anytime we feel like summoning right, the SEC. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, we right. got to go back to 1943. There it is right there, right? So, you know, right. So we have to go back to that anytime because they're living in the 1940s. So we got to we got to use the appropriate technology, the 47 Howie, uh, you know, um, test, which, you know, people think that's like what was the Supreme Court that weighed in on that and sort of created that legislation. Uh, I, I think not only Jeff and I curious, but I think everybody in the chat's probably curious to get your thoughts on the SEC v. Ripple case. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I have to be careful with that. I'm sure okay. everybody would love to have me talk about what I think. But this, is, this is where the legislative branch has to respect, uh, you know, the executive branch, and both of them have to uh, respect the uh, judicial branch. And I, I, I love the people who are in this space, Chip. Yeah. Because they don't want to do things as we have done them in the past. But understand the way this thing was set up, if a uh, elected official like myself starts, uh, which uh, hypothetically, let's put it this way, Chip. Hypothetically, if an elected official like myself starts to get very aggressive, uh, you know, some might say sprinkle all over the uh, the SEC for what they're doing, uh, that that would be viewed as perhaps uh, trying to weigh in on this, mm. this issue, as opposed to uh, we just got to make sure that they understand uh, their job. And this is what I did. I, I love the fact that you uh, called up that hearing with Gary Gensler. You'll remember that I walked him through a certain fact pattern. First, I had him admit his job, his mission at the SEC is to protect the retail investor. And then I had him, I walked him through a fact pattern that showed when you do this and then that happens, you have basically just screwed every retail investor in the marketplace. Uh, it's total, right. It, and it was a boom. Uh, he didn't, you know, I know he's from MIT and I'm not, but uh, <laughs> he, he walked into it. But that's the point, right? So again, here tonight, for anybody who's uh, listening, watching, uh, I'm not going to tell you what the SEC should do. I'm not going to have a, a list of complaints. Uh, I'm just going to continue to encourage our federal government and people like uh, uh, Chair Gensler really lean into this, start to understand that uh, this is much bigger than what you uh, grew up with. Uh, it's much bigger than uh, you know people just uh, wrestling in the marketplace for market share. This is the type of innovation that as disruptive as it might be, it is going to completely change how people do bargain for exchanges. It's going to completely change how we actually handle uh, transactions with one another. And there's nothing that I, I believe, and this is going to be taken, uh, I'm sure, uh, with a black mark over at the uh, Fed and others. There's nothing the federal government's going to be able to do at the end of the day, short of what they do in China, which is turn the power off, uh, to stop these entrepreneurs and these creative people that, quite frankly, are here because they're so disgusted, whether they, they're conscious about it, many of them are, or the others that are not necessarily conscious about it, but they're reacting to it, the horrible monetary policy that this country and others around the world uh, have been uh, engaged in since the early 70s, when we went from a country that built wealth and was proud about building wealth to a country, and by the way, and trading in wealth, to a country that creates debt and now trades debt. And it's like, uh, okay, you wonder why the middle class disappeared or is disappearing? It's your monetary policy, right? In order for you to survive today, you have to get bigger and bigger and bigger because you have to have the assets in order to trade everybody's debt. And guess what? You either get bigger or you fall below. And it, it's uh, we got to get back to strong monetary policies that recognize that's what we're supposed to be doing. And this market, Crypto came about because of this, and it's uh, it's growing uh, because of this. And I, I just don't see it going away, guys. It's a $3 trillion market cap. Perhaps our uh, colleagues in the federal government have finally sat up and take notice and said, ooh, I don't think we're going to be able to stop this. Uh, we better figure out how to get on board 
And their idea of getting on board right now is they think they're the conductor on the train. I got news for you. You're not the conductor. The conductors are uh, watching uh, shows like this and paying attention. That's we right. the people. Yep. We the people. Yeah. And we are the majority. And, and, you know, it, it's, it's interesting, you know, you bring up, we have right now about 630, 640 people watching live and we'll have thousands that watch in the, in the, you know, rebroadcast. Um, and these are people from all over the world. So for many of them, this is like a first glimpse when they start seeing the inner workings and the inner thinkings of U S government, you know, all the things, uh, that, that, but the one thing that you point out is that the rest of the world, that is normalizing some crypto clarity or some regulatory clarity for the crypto space. They're looking at what we're doing over here and they say, Hey, keep it up. Keep the, keep doing what you're doing because you're just going to chase all that business, all that innovation, everything is going to leave. Um, and you have people like, uh, you know, Michael Saylor and others that are looking just at one asset, just looking at Bitcoin. And they say there's another hundred time growth you know, for Bitcoin, you know, forget about all the other, the whole, whole space is, is growing rapidly. Uh, crypto.com recently signed a contract. They just took over the Staples Center and now it's going to be crypto.com arena. And it was a $700 million, 19 year deal. They're not going anywhere. You know, uh, FTX just, uh, they did it down in Miami. So there's a lot of growth here. Um, John Deaton had a question um, for you. And, and this is interesting, you know, but he, he had asked, he said, uh, who do you consider the most powerful or influential opponents, uh, to crypto that's currently in Congress? Well, I think Congress is the most uh, powerful opponent through inaction, right? I think, uh, you know, this, uh, idea that we can sit put, so I, I, it's not a cop out. You can't pick any one person. It's, uh, it, the question is timing. Right. I met with a, a uh, one of the entrepreneurs in this space, big entrepreneur down in Atlanta, probably six, seven months ago. You know what? He chose to uh, start a new project, one point four billion dollar project in the British Virgin Isles. Mm -hmm. It's already begun. Uh, if we don't start to get our act together and, uh, you know, it's really interesting. Ted Cruz is now uh, coming along. Right. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah. We get voices like that that, uh, you know, have created uh, a certain uh, uh, level of uh, listenership. Uh, it's going to move faster. Remember, though, be careful of what you wish for, because uh, on the Senate side, it really was about revenue. Uh, they're mm. desperate to figure out how to pay for all this new government. Uh, that will be the debate. Uh, I think, though, it's it's Congress and it's uh, it's inability to move. You know, it's like turning a super tanker at sea. Hopefully it's going to speed up dramatically. I think these education pieces, the fact that Chip brings up, we've got this hearing that's now been noticed. Uh, great stuff. Uh, is Do I expect something's going to happen uh, before the end of this year, before the end of this Congress? Eh, maybe with the uh, tax issue in the uh, bipartisan infrastructure bill, we might be able to take care of that. Remember that doesn't go into effect until 2023. So we got a little bit of time, but we can use that to grow the knowledge base in Congress. And hopefully uh, over the next two or three years, you're gonna see some uh, uh, gargantuan jumps. And to our friends around the globe who are watching this, yeah, I mean, we're, we're a messy uh, operation over here in the United States. But it's, it's in the genetics. So before you think that we're going to uh, adopt European socialism, uh, even if it's on paper, uh, before you think that we're going to follow the lead of the Communist Party of China, I got news for you. The cowboy, cowgirl spirit that created this country uh, 200 plus years ago is still alive and well. Uh, people here challenge their government every day. Uh, it doesn't mean that they, uh, they're they looking to uh, uh, you know upend everything. It's just the, the nature of uh, this great uh, experience that we have that's alive and well. And we're just going through changes. Our government's catching up with the uh, main street all across this country. Uh, everybody in this space, you're the pioneers. You're the one that literally is grabbing your federal government by the nostrils, and you are dragging us along with you. And I, I'm confident that before this is all over, uh, not only is crypto going to succeed in major ways, I mean, look what it's done around the globe and empowering mm. people that have never been part of the financial system, have never had the freedom that it's uh, that it's giving them. Uh, get ready. Uh, it's going to be here in the United States. It's going to be around the globe. And uh, I think the future is bright regardless. And I appreciate what you guys are doing. 
uh, just keep singing the song because uh, there are a lot of people who are uh, who are paying attention. Well, thank you for that, Congressman Emmer. I know we want to be respectful of your time, but I do want to ask one thing. So you, you said that tax isn't going to happen until 2023. Midterms coming up 2022. Do the Republicans take back the House and the Senate? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, I mean, unless there's a major course correction chip and what do I mean by that? Well, you got to quit spending all this money. I talked about the monetary mm -hmm. policy that's been so flawed, by the way, I'm not, I'm an equal opportunity complainer and criticizer. <laughs> this has happened. I, I told you before we went on air, uh, we, it was Republicans that took it off the gold standard back in the early seventies. This has been Republican, Democrat, Republican, Democrat, Republican, Democrat. They've been screwing with this thing for the better part of 40 years. And guess what? The, uh, the crows have come home to roost. Uh, we're at a place where now they can't seem to slow down their spending. They're driving inflation like we haven't seen in since when I was getting out of high school, uh, everything's more expensive. And guess what? The very reason that uh, crypto came into existence, uh, wherever Satoshi is, uh, you know, when this all all began back in 2008, it actually began before that, as we all know. But mm -hmm. this thing where it took off uh, is all because people don't have confidence with the monetary system as it exists. Uh, we haven't been handling it well. So, uh, these guys with their spending, uh, they're driving inflation. Uh, they Everything they seem to be doing is contrary to what Main Street America uh, has been asking for. And all these people are asking uh, these elected officials to do is listen to them and respond. And when they don't, when they pat them on the head and basically tell Americans, hey, we got this, you, you sit over there, whether it's your kid's education, whether it's uh, crime in the streets, uh, you sit over there. We, we've got this. We're the ones that are making the decisions. Guess what? The beauty of this system, Chip, is you get to exercise your right to speak up, to stand up, speak up, and hire somebody else. You saw it in Virginia. You saw it in uh, New Jersey. Uh, by the way, New Jersey, what an interesting thing. you got a, a trucker. That was a good news, bad news thing. you got a trucker who spent 150 some dollars and beat the second most powerful Democrat in New Jersey. That's the good news. The bad news, we lost another trucker, which we can't afford to lose any truckers. Right now. <laughs> That's true. Uh, well, well said. Point. I and think it's so, going gonna, it's gonna to flip, guys. Yeah, nice. we, we really appreciate that. And I'll, I'll tell you what, you know, like I said, we have uh, a lot of people watching, a lot of people tuning in from all over the world. Um, we also have a lot of top YouTubers in the space that are tuning in tonight. Um, and I know there's been reference to different people here like Crypto Eddie, uh, Blockchain Backer, uh, DAI, amongst many others that are in this space. If there's anything uh, that you need that we can help you with uh, from an education perspective to help reach out to Congress, uh, let us know. You can have your staff reach out to us. We're more than happy to help out uh, in any way that we can. Uh, Jeff, we will absolutely do that. Anybody who knows me uh, or is interested in getting to know I still have a LinkedIn space that uh, when it says, what's your occupation? I'm a customer service representative for the U.S. Congress. Uh, we work for all of you. So uh, please, we're only as good as the information we're getting. Uh, I didn't grow up with this. I started uh, learning it about seven years ago, uh, maybe a little bit more. Uh, we got a long way to go. So we can, we'll accept any and all criticism, advice, help uh, the community wants to offer. Thank you very much. And also, too, thank you on behalf of everybody. But this is worldwide. Thank you for fighting because it takes somebody like yourself to stand up and say enough is enough. We're going to put the you're going to put the energy into putting the bills that, the, you know, the acts forward. And you know what? You're not giving up. And that's what I love. And you're one of the best proponents out there um, and a voice giving voice to not only people in the U.S., but as Jeff mentioned, globally and for that decentralization is freedom you said it, the genie can't be put back in the bottle and i think jeff and i are with you all the way so thank you congressman emmer for taking a few minutes out of your amazing schedule and coming with us to, uh, to be with us tonight thank you guys for having me look forward to seeing you one of these days in beautiful south florida come on down come we'll on get down. the boat we'll get the boat ready we'll get the barbecue ready <laughs> and uh, we'll just make sure it doesn't rain. We'll try to do our best. By three, right. it should clear up. So we're not coming up that way during the winter. So, no. <laughs> and rain is better than snow. Well, unless you're me, I like snow. Yeah. But thank I need you guys. for a day. Take care. All awesome. Right. All right. Have a thank good one. You. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye bye. All right. Well, there yeah. you go. You have it. Um, we had 30 minutes with Congressman Emmer. And man, I got to tell you, Jeff. <laughs> wow. That was outstanding. Stuff.
That was outstanding. There were so many questions that people oh, were we throwing get to in. Them all. We had we so many get questions. All. We, I think we got to the meat of it. You know, and a lot of people wanted to know about the SEC. They wanted to know about the SEC v. XRP. And there was so much back information that we had to get mm. first. But then, you know, I think he, he made a solid point. And this goes, you know, as we have different branches of government, as we, as we have different uh, uh, um Committees are not committees, but you get uh, uh, losing the word right now. But, um, you know, you can't have an overlap, you know. So, you know, if, if he's to make a statement on what's going on over at the SEC, uh, it could be super detrimental, you know, overall. And that's an overreach of his position and his power. And it'd be nice if if we'd see others uh, within uh, government, you know, really adhering to that thought process that if I speak up right now, it could be detrimental to something that's happening, whether it's a, a court case or 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 other, you know, and that goes for all sides. So you have to be very uh, cognizant of that. Exactly, Jeff. And, you know, it's it's not too often that you see somebody who represents the people come out and say, hey, we work for you. Um, it's not the other way around. We don't we, we don't we shouldn't be legislating inside of a vacuum. And, you know, to me, that's super honest. One of the things I love about Congressman Emmer, just the honesty, the sheer honesty. And, you know, even in our even in our conversation, we had we had a few little laughs right before he went live and, um, you know, kind of small talk. But again, it, it, it speaks loudly to somebody who's actually doing the work for the people. We always talk about here, we the people. And, you know, I love that you brought up, you know, uh, Crypto Eddie, you know, blockchain backer, um, digital asset investor, you know, other people in the space who have been making a huge impact. And then when you brought that up to Congressman Emmer saying that we, you know, we're here for you, man. We'll listen, don't forget this community. Yeah, we talk about this asset and that a digital asset, but in the end of it all, we're all pro crypto. And it was really refreshing just uh, as far as an interview, just to watch, you know, almost everything. I'm really going to have to watch it back to kind of like digest it. But, you know, my 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 feeling was, Jeff, that it was um, it, it went too fast. But I loved pretty much what he said. And the fact of the matter is, is look, this hearing, you know, I'll thank John Deaton for tweeting about this because I, I saw the tweet right before we went live. Um, as far as this, uh, I mean, even the the subject matter, it's not like uh, you know, learning about digital assets and the nefarious aspects of it. No, no, no. That that language is moving out, and the new language is moving in about how can we learn. You know, where's the innovation, all that stuff. So I was like, even the subject matter is a big turn, and it's refreshing. It really is. You know, check out. You know, Apex is saying this shows Emmer's character. <laughs> you know, comes on a crypto channel in the midst of mm. his busy calendar for mostly constituents that he doesn't even represent. You know that. That's a class act. This is something that he's passionate about. It also represents the fact that he understands that it's global in nature, that right now what's happening at the SEC level, what's happening at the Congress uh, level is is really, you know, it's it's, you know, it, it's such a travesty, you know, because of the fact that if we crush even just a little bit of innovation here in the United States, the whole world's going to suffer, you know, because this has really been, you know, it's kind of like the the epicenter of innovation always mm -hmm. has been always will be. I'm not saying we're not getting amazing things in other parts of the world, but this is the one area that people are the most free uh, to innovate and create. It's the, one of the, the countries in the world that's the easiest to start a business. You can come over here with a dollar in your pocket from another country yep. and start a business here and succeed. And people have done it over and over and over and over again. You know, and sometimes people that were born here in this country forget about that fact. And that's yes. on both sides of the aisle. They get too accustomed and they start taking advantage of the freedoms that, that we have here. And man, it's. <laughs> yeah, it happens. But I'll tell you another thing that I really loved about what, um, you know, Congressman Emmer brought up this whole idea of the monetary policy, you know, he's so spot on about that. It's not too dissimilar to what we talk about day in and day out, you know, and he, he passed the blame around equally. It was, uh, it was Nixon, a Republican, that took us off the monet, you know, took us off the gold standard. Our, you know, our fiat currency was backed by nothing, and then we had massive inflation, you know, and people were like, "Well, that's okay because now two people are working, and and that's okay because well, we're making a little bit more money." But the bottom line is, you know, he alluded to the fact that it's, you know, at some point it crashes and burns, and that was only supposed to be temporary because of the, remember the gold speculator, the gold speculators, because people were speculating in gold. So I love the fact that he also called out the monetary policy you know we didn't even get a chance to ask him about janet yellen you know especially since was, she spent 
time at the Fed, and then now she's the Treasury, you know, a uh, secretary. Yes, but man, we could have spent moment, right? <laughs> we could have spent like two hours just going off, Jeff. I mean, just nonstop with you know with the congressman. But um, yeah, how brilliant was it? And you know, I gotta say kudos to you for really making this happen, and you know, putting all the effort into um, you know, it took this took a while to come together, right? It took some time to put this together, and the fact is, is that you know, um, you know, you made it happen, and that's really you know, kudos, man, because man, it, what a joy. Man, and there's so much more to hear from, you know, and oh, yeah. everybody should be doing their part. But, you know, we're still working on getting Charlie Gasparino over here. You know, we want to reach out uh, to uh, to different senators that have Cynthia been the uh, alumnus getting her Cynthia on here. Alumnus, Patrick McHenry. Got, exactly. So there's so many more people. The more people we hear from, the more educated we become, the more educated they become, the more they get to then speak to their circle of influence, which are other Congress people, uh, you know, both in the house and the Senate say, Hey, you know what? I was just on this, uh, YouTube podcast and here, and there were X number of people. These are the questions they were asking, you know, it wasn't just a bunch of fluff. It, you know, yeah. there were some serious questions. People are legitimately concerned, you know, about the direction that crypto is going and they don't like this, uh, you know, uh, uh, decision by legislation. You know, it just, it's not good. You can't be dragged in front of court, you know, every time something has to happen. This isn't the way you have regulatory clarity. So. Forgot to mention another big, important uh, YouTuber out there, you know, bringing great stuff. Uh, Mickey B. Fresh, he is the DeFi standard, no doubt. Thank you for that, Jeff. Chip and Jeff, you're killing it. Keep up the great work, spreading the message. Yeah, we're all spreading the message. And, you know, it takes, it takes uh, you know, like-minded people. And that's one of the things that I'm super excited uh, and bullish on crypto is just because of the whole decentralization. You, you know, uh, Congressman Emmer said it. You cannot stop us. You're not going to slow. You might slow us down, but you are not going to stop us. And I love how he said the cowboy and cowgirl spirit, right? Because that's the fighting spirit. That's what made, you know, uh, that's what made this country. Because we can talk about, and again, I choose my words carefully, but, you know, you got to look at the way this country was founded, right? Uh, half the people that signed that Declaration of Independence um, where their houses were burned down, they lost their families, they lost everything because they were searching and they wanted to create something new and they wanted true freedom. And, you know, and then what ensued with the uh, Federalist Papers and what later became, you know, the Constitution is one of the few constitutions, it's one of the, I think the only one in the world that tells the government what they cannot do. And boy, do the politicians hate that. And I'm not talking about Congressman Emmer. I'm talking about everybody who has tried to circumvent uh, this great constitution and what's happening in other parts uh, of the world too, where that their constitution is also being um, skirted and, it, and and trying to trying to have gone around right. And they're not sticking to what their original beliefs are. But in the end, this whole DeFi space uh, decentralization, um, it's not going anywhere. And uh, it's it's a it's a positive to at least see a hearing. Um, that's coming up in a couple of weeks. We'll all be reporting on it. And I just want to commend everybody and doing your part too, because whether you're on crypto Twitter, tweeting about it, whether you're in here talking about it, look, we're winning the war, in my opinion. We are getting the message out. Um, it takes all of us together and all of us together, we make up the majority and the majority always wins, right? That's usually how it goes, right, Jeff? That's right. You know, I just want to, you know, point out some other, you know, great comments. There were tons and tons of comments. I'm awesome. picking out some good ones here. This one, Veritas, Equitas, Semper, OTC Mondays, Chip are epic. And then we can't forget about that one. And then check this one out from Berserker. Um, Berserker, what is going on? Uh, we got to give you a shout handsome. out here in a minute. But look at these handsome men interviewing Titans. Nice, right? How great is that? And it's yeah. just, uh, let's see. We've got... Uh, there you go. Blazers. Blazers. Yeah, we wore the Drew gotcha. out the Blazers today. Jeff and I didn't even talk. We we're like, he wore the light blue, I wore the dark blue, you know, and that's kind of how it looks. And then you know Bonnie Jeff there. and I have to dress up like this a lot for our work, right? I mean, it's always like and it's so cool to do it on this channel. Jeff, we should probably adopt this. Maybe we'll be taken a little more seriously. And not that we won't stop being the slowest <laughs> growing channel ever, but um, but you know, but maybe we'll Same um time Mondays. Suit and tie Mondays. Why don't we do that? We no ties. It was funny when uh, when Congressman Emmer said, uh, "Yeah, he's like, I wish I would have ditched the tie, man." <laughs> but you remember what? <laughs> well, you remember? You remember what unfolded when we had Warren, you know, Congressman Warren yeah. Davidson on here? <laughs> you and I dressed up, and he wore a polo shirt because he's like, "Oh, I watched your I watched your podcast, and I saw you guys you guys were wearing t shirts." So I thought at least I'll put on a polo. So it was kind of the reverse <laughs> <That's right>. there, right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. 
than uh, paper chaser saying, I don't know if he's talking to us or someone else. Don't stand up. I don't know. That's <laughs> hit your head on the ceiling right there. It's like, it's yeah, like pushing up. That. on that. <laughs> I don't Yes, I am about, wearing but... shorts. I'm wearing shorts too, Jeff. I got my favorite, <laughs> you know, golf shorts on right here. They're like super stretchy and I can just pull them up and snap them. And you know, that's how you do it. I mean, look, how cool would it be? That's one of the things I gotta be honest. The first time I went to Bermuda, and, I, and it was like it was like during the day of the week, and I saw everybody walking around in the Bermuda shorts. I'm like, I'll be damned! They really do wear those Bermuda shorts. And then they had like suit, they had blazers on with like something like polo shirts, and they were walking around. Some of them had the high socks, some of them had the lower socks. But I'm like, that's a damn good look. Why can't we incorporate it? We should have that in Florida, Jeff. That's right. So, and man, also wanted so we got that crypto gee blazers at the next after show meetup. <laughs> oh hell go. yeah, yeah. Everyone's well, got to have a blazer. Well, you know, there's going to be a meetup, an XRPL meetup. Um, that it's going to be well, in Miami. So, yeah, coming up on the 9th, I believe, right? And so Jeff and I yeah. will be down there. So if anyone's going to. And also, too, I wanted to, um, Notorious XRP, I want to thank you for the 6,784 Super Chats that you send. And, of course, everybody else, too, um, Blockchain Backer, too. I mean, I, I want to, I'd like to, it's the weird thing about the software is, is that sometimes I, we see them up top, but there's no way to display them on the screen. What kind of stuff is that, Jeff? That's the weirdest thing, yeah, right? They're up top and then they disappear. Yeah, and it's like in this, and it's just in the software. They're here, but we see them, we catch them. Try well, to catch I'll, them I'll basically say, them. yeah, so Blockchain Backer had a really good question. And unfortunately, you know, we just didn't want to, we, we just skimmed the surface of that. He called us pioneers. Yes, he did. Pioneers, that was awesome. That that's, that's to everybody that's listening right now. You think about that. Whether you're a builder, an investor, it, it doesn't matter. You're pioneers. Think about the old West, you know, you grabbed your wagon, you know, and you got in it, put all your stuff in and you went to the West, you know, and you had no idea what you were going to find. And that's it. You know, pioneers coming into this space, brand new, This, you know, it, and it's still relatively new. A lot of things that are going on here, you know, and, and one thing we reference, you know, community effort, that's a hundred percent spot on. And, you know, and whatever, Whatever we can do, whatever value we can add. Because one thing that we always reference here, Chip, is that by far, you know, although we might be the slowest YouTube uh, growing YouTube channel uh, right here in crypto, we by far have the best and the brightest that come out and you know chat and gather in this in this space over here. We got some amazing people. We got blockchain backer talking about December 9th, because I believe that's when the XRPL meetup. Yeah, uh, it's trying, coming up trying, on uh, on December 9th. So I'm trying to find it you know. actually. It's like and then yeah, you, know, like you Google it and you, the first very first one is incorrect. It's like crypto crypto woe is say somebody please impersonate uh, BCB. Yeah, um, Jeff, isn't that your department? Oh, is that mine? <laughs> Welcome to on the chain. This is Chip Blocker. That's my blockchain backer. This is the blockchain backer. And somebody said it sounded like, what was it? What did they comment that it sounded like, Jeff? One of those weird <laughs> internet memes things you used to uh, from Homestar the, Runner. <laughs> yeah, Homestar Runner. Yeah. I was like, oh man, I totally, I totally missed that totally 100%. Oh, okay. But, but yeah. The email. No, the email. Yeah. You, you just have to, uh, but I can't find it now, Jeff. That's the craziest thing. What are you looking for? Well, I'm trying to find the uh, the the meetup, and it's like the one I went to. The link's no longer there. Anybody have a second. link to the uh, meetup on the here ninth? We here we go. Here we go. Hang on, I think I found it. Nope. Uh, here we go. The Atlanta meetups coming up. Then you have the San Francisco. Here's the Miami one right here. Yeah, we there got Tony we go. from Thinking Crypto here with us tonight. Uh, how do we another, not mention Tony? Another huge one in the space. You Who know, crushes awesome. it with all the interviews, man. All the interviews, all amazing interviews. Uh, you know, Tony Thinking Crypto. And then, of course, then we've got Dash. Where's Dash? Here's Dash. Dash is right there. Chip and Jeff would kill it in Congress. Oh, man, See I would that? love to go to Congress. Too much. Sounds like too much work, Jeff. I'm not having a, more fun. You can't, you can't do this anymore. But here it is right here. Um, yeah, it is this t Thursday, December 9th. It's, it says 3 p.m., but that's Pacific time. It starts for, it's from 6 to 10. So I know there's a bunch of uh, spots left, uh, 33 spots right there left. So they are and capping live, it. Correct um live in know. person yeah it's a live in person this is an actual meetup where you're going to get down there you're going to meet up and it's going to be good so you can see some of the people that i don't recognize um any of them but anyway it's i think it'd be great if you're in miami or something you wanted to go learn if you're a developer and you want to get together and you know uh, talk about stuff that's great and uh yeah it's at the lab in miami and uh that's right jeff that's exactly where we went to where the uh the bitcoin 2020 was 
2021 was and that's yep. kind of a it's kind of an odd part of town to have that in but yeah so hey so uh paper chaser said did 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 you all mention that gary yes. studied at mit tonight yes we did oh yeah we did we did mention <laughs> of course that we Jeff. brought that up <laughs> we wouldn't go by without saying and because one of the questions that i had was do you find and he kind of answered it right when i was gonna say you know do you find it odd to a guy that spent three years as a professor at mit uh teaching blockchain knows nothing about blockchain i mean does anybody find that a little bit strange i mean at, at all it's like he tells everybody he's been there like jeff you say he reminds everybody all the time about mit but i mean nobody finds that odd three years man it's not like he was there for three months he was a you know an adjunct professor no he was one of the the uh the guys there and he reminds us all the time he, yet he knows very little about uh blockchain or uh digital assets DeFi, either that or he's like pretending he doesn't know anything about it because he just want to enforce the hell out of it i don't know hey chip i do want to remind people that if you're brand new here to make sure that you subscribe. If you like what you're seeing, there's always a lot of great content here because we stream six days per week. We stream Sunday through Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We do bring on some great guests over here. We bring on guests from within the community as well, which is outstanding. Um, but if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe, hit the bell notifier. That way you get notified 30 minutes before we go live, sometimes That's 20. Right. Uh, but Chip, there's, man, there's, I'm, I'm really excited about tonight. You know, I'm, I'm really glad to see, you know, all the great people that, uh, you know, that turned out tonight as well that were here. We had like 650 people tuning in live. We're going to have thousands and thousands of people that tune in afterwards to listen in and hear, you know, all the great things that uh, Congressman Emmer had to say. We had 30 minutes with him. You know, this space, you know, 10 years, 10 years we've seen this space growing. Um, right now we have one man, you know, that is really standing up for the crypto space. And that was Congressman Tom Emmer. But then you have Darren Soto has part is participating. You've got Warren Davidson is participating. Uh, we'd mentioned McHenry. We've got Kennedy. We've got Lummis. You know, we've got all these different people you know, within the space that are in politics right now. The greatest thing is that as we move forward and the one thing that we noticed that's missing and one of the things that he said is that most people in Congress, they still want to do things the old way. They haven't really woken up yet. They are waking up. But as we move into, uh, you know, new election cycles and there's new people running, you know, what we got to do is run out and you have to educate those people in your community. Try to educate the existing mm -hmm. ones. Try to educate the new ones. Um, yeah. We have a... a uh, a woman here, she's going to be running against uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz. And I'm going to do as much as I can uh, to really help, you know, uh, and answer any questions there are within blockchain or at least, you know, tune, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, tune her into some of the the more educated people that can really, you know, highlight some of the key points. And then I always recommend, hey, let you know, listen, go back and listen. Tom Emmer has got some amazing, there's amazing clips on YouTube with all these guys. Uh, to really tune in and get a gauge and kind of temperature of what's going on over there. Yeah, one of the things I love that uh, Congressman Ember brought up, he brought up uh, Ted Cruz is starting to get the bug. And the best thing was when Ted Cruz got on the floor and basically insulted everybody in the Senate saying, there's not five people, including myself, that know anything about cryptocurrency, blockchain, or any of that stuff. I mean, I thought that was just amazing. And it is great to see somebody stand up like a Ted Cruz. But I mean, just here's another freshman senator. You got Cynthia Lummis, who's doing an amazing job of getting her voice heard, of getting to the microphone at the right time and standing up. Right. So you've got on the Senate side and then you have you have so many in the House. And, um, you know, it's interesting that I just I mean, I'm curious about how this hearing is going to go off just because it does have some sort of a positive spin. And then Jeff, nothing for years, not even close. And let's face it, it was the Republicans who controlled the House before that. They did nothing. It yeah, was uh, Republicans that, that appointed right. Jay Clayton, nothing. Then the Democrats uh, basically appointed, um, you know, Gary Gensler, and he's turned out to be a colossal bust. But again, when you lose, you know, when, when you go down and you, uh, if you want to take big risk and you want to say everything's an investment contract, it's one of the things I love about Congressman Emmer is, um, one of his um, bills there is the fact that it changes the definition. And then, you know, what happened to be, you wouldn't have the SEC even touching that, but Congress has to act. And, you know, even Gensler brought that up saying like, well, if you don't like it, uh, have Congress repeal it, you know, have them change it, have them do something. 
And that's what really I thought was a really fair answer when Congressman Emmer said, hey, you know, who's the who's the biggest uh, opponent? It's Congress, right? For the inaction. 100%. I thought that was so spot on. That was very spot on. It's not any one individual, even though he did bring up uh, the Shermanator and did say- I was going to say the Shermanator. When he, said he said that, I wanted to say <laughs> Shermanator. I was about to say, well, we refer to him as the Shermanator here. That would be it. <laughs> I You almost did say that there, Jeff. You were like did. leaning was, in. You're I was trying leaning to get that. Out about to I was say like, it. oh no, here comes the Shermanator. It's coming. <laughs> here it comes. <laughs> so here's Ryan Wittenberg said, I'm less bearish on the US after hearing Rep Emmer talk. And there you go. I mean, you hear people- uh, like Rep Emmer, and you see that he still has the passion. Like he said, hey, you know what? The genie's out of the bottle. It's not going back. Things are moving forward. The only thing that could change here in the short term is that the U.S. loses out on innovation, uh, right. loses out on the jobs. Uh, that the, the space is still going to grow. Uh, and we, we're seeing that through investment and everything else, you know. So, and I'm, I, I agree exactly with what Ryan's saying because I feel you know, almost that same, you know, passion. It's like, here we go. You know, here's, here's what we've got. Here's what's going on. And Chip, check this one out from Berserker. This is history in the making, and I'm grateful to be part of it. Right on, Berserker. Look at this one here. We oh, got Mark. Oh, sorry. So I want to put this one. Mark Hayes, uh, UK XRP Army in the house. Uh, we welcome everybody, not only from the UK, but guys, it's it such amazing support from all over the world. I love what he said. I love how he addressed everybody, too. Uh, once he knew this was an international audience, he addressed you, you know, everybody. And I, I just thought that's just classy, you know, I mean, really just sharp and explaining that we are not going down that easy and it's not going to happen. That right there, Jeff, I might want to just put that as a ringtone on my phone. Yeah, hell, it'll be annoying. And it'll last about four minutes long. But you know what, Jeff, people <laughs> should hear it, I think. I think people, should, they, they deserve to hear that. We should grab that clip and then we'll just put it in our, in our thing. We'll just play it. Over Play and over it and, over and then take that's when we do the bathroom break mid show, you know, and throw that up there. But also, too, a big thank you to everybody, too, with the super chats. I know we couldn't get to them, we didn't want to break the, the pace, you know, the show. But I want to thank everybody, too, because it does mean an awful lot to Jeff and I, and it doesn't go unnoticed. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get to them, but again, really appreciate the support. Yeah, here's another one from uh Rich uh Tyler. I've learned more on YouTube in 14 months <laughs> than he has in his entire life. I could not care less what building you taught crypto. What? I could not care less what building you taught crypto. In. Yeah, what building you taught build, building crypto in. So yeah. it doesn't matter. Oh, oh I yeah. get yeah. Against exactly. Like, exactly. Yeah. Yep. And that and that's and that's a solid point. You know, and it's man, it, it is amazing and think about how much we learn, you know, just doing these shows every single day. You know, not just from what we read, but from the comments in the space. I think we've right. learned you know, as much from the comments and the comments are flying by as we're talking and we're reading the comments as they go by, just kind yeah. of absorbing all this great and stuff. And I can always tell when Jeff's reading the comments because I'll be talking about something serious and Jeff will be snickering over there as he's reading the comments. Like the worst thing I could do is start doing that because then I'll start like smiling, laughing because <laughs> you just react to it, you know? Um, it's just and a natural funny occurrence. funny stuff over here comes up and, you know, how could you not? It's great. Yeah, it is. Great it is stuff. really good stuff. And I got to say, what a... What a uh, what a fun show! What a privilege it was to have Congressman Emmer on there, and of course, all with all of you as well. And and uh, you know, it's always a, always a cool thing. And you know, we'll continue doing that. We'll bring you the very best that we can. Um, the questions, and there were some um, really good questions. I think I forgot who asked the one about the uh, the Ripple XRP. Because it was something that was kind of in the background. But I said, hey, I was going to position it as somebody had asked it. You know who you are. But again, I thought you know that might. I didn't think he could really speak about it per se, but he's aware of it. He knows what's going on. He, you know, it's not like he's doesn't know really what's happening, but I, I thought that was um, some insightful stuff as well. Yeah. And uh, here's uh, Dash is saying, if you guys get too big, the comments will go by too fast. And then we'll have to slow them down. No, we'll have to slow them down. We're not worried about that, Jeff. We'll have to put you on the slow one every three seconds. You can type something. That's right. In. Exactly. Chip, I want to give a quick shout out to everybody who stepped in and, and gave some support tonight. Yeah, absolutely. It's a special show, but we had uh, K HUD, XR Supercar, XRP Shark, Notorious XRP. Like you said, you had about 6,000 of them. Uh, we yeah. had Roderick Johnson, uh, Blockchain Backer. Uh, we got El Jefe, K HUD, XRP Hollywood, Mark Hayes. Um, and let's see what we got SPF, you know, you are Silhouette, Park 
farm. Oh yeah. And then, Adam, and I'm just yeah. very like notorious, 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 notorious. And then there's another <laughs> one in between. Appreciate you notorious. You do an amazing job in the space. Oh, yeah. Also, oh, yeah, um, great stuff, great content and a big shout out to everybody that took their time to tune in tonight. Cause we have people from all over the world chip. I don't know if you realize that. All of course I do, world. Jeff. Even Brandon yeah. sometimes tunes in here because I, you know, but, but Chip, man, did you know, like over in the UK right now, it's like, I don't know, what is it? They're like five hours ahead. You get into Europe, you yeah, go, it's crazy. There, there's people like sit five, six, seven, eight hours ahead. It's like the middle of the night. It's like early morning. But look at this question too. Be blockchain backer put a good, uh, you know, uh, super chat up. He said, "Hey Tom, are you aware that the United States XRP investors were hurt by the SEC, and the SEC ref refuses to provide any clarity? Meanwhile, Bitcoin, and Ethereum have benefited by the SEC damaging uh, BTC and ETA, uh, ETH's biggest competitor, XRP." It was a great question, and that would have been nice to have probably gotten some uh, some answers to. But uh, again, you can't do it all. We had a half an hour with the congressman. And um, we even said, you know, in the beginning, like, hey, do you have a little five more minutes? And he, he really he really slotted the time. So and not only that, but our our little BS session before kind of ran a little bit longer. So we got like I had like 27 minutes with the congressman. So anyway, I want to thank everybody for showing up tonight. Thank you for the, all the support. Thank you for everybody that um, asked questions on Twitter. And, you know, Jeff and I will continue to, you know, do this. Uh, we got a couple more days this week um, to Man. do this. Uh, Thursday is a holiday um, what we call referred to as Thanksgiving in the United States. And, you know, I would say if we all look deep inside, being turned on to the crypto space, we all have a lot to be thankful for. Obviously, Jeff and I are very thankful for the platform and your support. But just look around. And, you know, I always think gratitude is one of the greatest things we can have in life about being grateful, not for what you don't have, but everything you have and the privileges that you have that maybe others don't. So there's a lot to be thankful for. And that's something I like to do. Uh, um, you know, do some reflection too, but we won't be brought and see Jeff snickering again. See, he's over there snickering. I'm, I'm getting some really serious message, Jeff. He's over there snickering. He's like, serious. <laughs> try not to laugh, you know. But anyway, no, that's 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 all I have to say, Jeff. Are you got anything before we get out of here? Are you down with us? Uh, OTC, hell yeah. Oh, yeah, down with OTC. Brandon is saying, Why is everyone <laughs> saying Brandon in here? <laughs> Thank you, Brandon. Glad you're LGB. here. Brandon. Let's go. <laughs> Brandon Hill. Appreciate no. you guys. Man, this no. is awesome. Tomorrow's another great night. Tomorrow's Tuesday. We'll be back here at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And for all you guys, we do stream six days a week, Sunday through Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't forget to hit the subscribe on your way out. Tune back in tomorrow night because tomorrow, Chip, is another day. Yeah, another great day in the uh, decentralized uh, land. We'll be doing a lot of good stuff. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Chip and Jeff out. Big shout out to Congressman Tom Emmer for coming on the chain. See you guys. We're out. Are you down with OTC? Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.